Um, so welcome back to this uh, part 5 of this video on uh, the um, reason that the metric space CAB with the integral metric is incomplete. And I do apologise for the previous um, abrupt ending uh, and interruption. Um, what we first thing need to do is uh, notice that this distance function between f little n of x and f little m of x, no matter how big you make little n, this is always going to be less than b minus a over 6 times 1 over m, basically. So uh, the reason is that you are always going to be subtracting off something here. So you're always going to be making this smaller, because little m, remember, is always a positive number. So this is absolutely always going to be less than b minus a over 6 uh, times 1 over little m. Now, what we've just said is that 1 over little m is less than or equal to 1 over big N because little m is greater than or equal to big N. So we can also say that this is less than or equal to b minus a over 6 uh, times 1 over big N, basically. So um, the distance between a function f little n of x and f little m of x is going to be less than, strictly less than, by transitivity. If this is strictly less than this, and this is less than or equal to this, then this is strictly less than this. So this is going to be strictly less than b minus a over 6 times 1 over big N. So if you pick, if you pick little n and little m, uh, which are greater than or equal to big N, then I can guarantee that the distance between those two functions, f little n of x and f little m of x, is going to be strictly less less than six minus, uh, b minus a over 6 times 1 over big N, and this is the proof of that. Right, uh, so uh, all I now need to do is say, okay, uh, that if we can make this number less than our epsilon, uh, then we're in business, because if you then pick um, a little n and a little m that are, beyond, that are greater than or equal to big N, then the distance between them is going to be less than b minus a over 6 times 1 over big N. And that, if that's strictly less than epsilon, if we've chosen big N so that this number is strictly less than epsilon, then we've done, haven't we? We've we found a point in this sequence of uh, functions where uh, if you pick two, any two points of the sequence, of that tail end of the sequence, uh, then the distance between them is going to be less than in, uh, epsilon. So what we need is b minus a over 6 times 1 over big N uh, to be strictly less than epsilon. Right, so now multiply both sides by big N and you get b minus a over 6 needs to be less than or equal to epsilon times n. So you can do that because n is a strictly positive number. So by the axioms of an ordered field, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, multiply both sides of an inequality like this uh, by a positive real number, and it will still remain true. And then again, what we're going to do is, because epsilon is gr strictly greater than 0, uh, epsilon will have a multiplicative inverse, and that will also be a positive number. So we can multiply both sides by epsilon's inverse, and we'll get that n needs to be greater than b minus a over 6 epsilon. So basically, you give me an epsilon, I will plug it into this formula, I will work Work out what is b minus a over 6 epsilon, and I will find some natural number. Remember, big N needs to be an element of the natural numbers. I'll find some natural number uh, which is greater than b minus a over 6 epsilon. And basically, if you take any two points, little n and little m, which are beyond that big N, are greater than or equal to that big N, and take their corresponding terms in the sequence, then the distance between those two terms is uh, going to be strictly less than epsilon. Okay, uh, so there we have it. That is a sequence. That is a Cauchy sequence of functions. However, it cannot possibly converge uh, to something in this metric space, basically. It cannot converge uh, to a continuous function, and this is the reason why. Uh, if you look at the picture, basically, if you look at what the picture of these functions, uh, then basically what we have if, is if we draw the interval a, b here, and again, we split it up into three parts. Then initially, it's zero. And basically, as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what you're going to be doing is dividing this uh, this middle segment up into finer and finer pieces. And this uniformly rising bit is going to get steeper and steeper. So this is going to converge on being a straight line, basically. So the function that this is overall going to converge to is going to be 
uh, something that looks like a uh, jump function like that, basically, where you've got uh, an infinite gradient, if you like, uh, a vertical line connecting this line from 0 to the line 1, and that's what it's going to converge on. And the reason is that you can see that as this gets bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, if I draw in this vertical line, basically, so uh, if I draw in this, um, this jump function where it suddenly jumps from 0 to 1, so that's the blue one, whereas the black one is the one of the elements of the sequence, then we can see that as the sequence gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this area bounded between them, which is the area of that tiny little triangle, as n gets smaller and smaller and smaller, that's going to just get smaller and smaller and smaller, because the area between them is just going to be the area of that triangle, and the area of that triangle is just going to be the, uh, the height, which is 1, times the base, which is the... Um, which is the length of this middle third interval, b minus a over 3, t times the amount uh, of that middle interval that it takes up, which is 1 over n, basically. And then you'll need to times that by half. So basically, that's going to be the area between this jump function, this blue function, and the black function, which is one of the elements of this are elements of this sequence. So this is um, basically the distance in our metric space between uh, f little n of x and this blue function. And obviously I'm bending the rules a little bit because the blue function isn't actually in the metric space. So really what this is is uh, the just the integral of the difference between them. Okay, uh, but basically b minus a over 6n, that's going to converge on 0 as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So uh, this sequence of functions is going to converge to that jump function, that blue function. And basically that blue function isn't a continuous function, so it's converging to something outside of the metric space according to that definition of the metric. So if we took the set of all, of all um, functions on this interval a, b, then this blue function would be in there. And if we tried to define a metric, which of course wouldn't work, but if we did define the metric where it existed between two functions as this integral of the modulus of their difference, uh, over the interval a, b, uh, then uh, this sequence of functions in that sort of metric space, of course it's not a metric space because the metric wouldn't be defined uh, between all uh, functions that you could come up with, uh, but it would converge in that to this step function, if you like, and that isn't a continuous function, so it's not in there, basically. Okay, so that's the reason that this cannot possibly um, possibly be a complete metric space, because what I've done is I've found your Cauchy sequence which doesn't converge to anything within the metric space.